Hey everyone, this is Medical Terminology, the basics lesson on microbiology. So we're going to specifically look at prefixes and suffixes to describe different bacteria, viruses, and fungi. The word microbiology is what we're going to look at quickly first just to know what it actually means. Micro means small, not visible to the naked eye. Bio means life, and logy means study of. So microbiology means the study of small life or the study of life that's not visible to the naked eye. So to begin, the prefix bacterio and the suffix bacter mean bacteria. So words like bacteriophage and enterobacter mean bacteria or something relating to a bacteria. Now, with regards to the prefix vir or viro, and the suffix is vir or virus, these mean virus or something relating to a virus. So you can think of words like ritonavir, which is an antiviral drug, and you can think of words like antivirus. So again, these mean virus or something relating to a virus. Another suffix that means virus is also phage or phage. Now, with regards to fungus or fungi, these are related or these are denoted by the prefix myc or myco or myceto. So you can think of onychomycosis, those types of words. So a lot of microbiological organisms are described by where they inhabit. So locations specifically. So some of these include entero, the prefix entero, which means intestine. So you can think of, again, enterobacter or enterobacteriaceae. Pneumo, which means air or lung. So you can think of pneumococcus. Rhabdo, which really means striated, but it is in the context of striated muscle. Adeno, which means relating to a gland. So you can think of adenovirus. Gono, which uh, denotes reproductive or something with regards to the reproductive system. You can think of gonorrhea. Meningo, which means the meninges in the central nervous system. So you can think of meningococcus. And crypto, which really just means hidden. Uh, you can think of cryptococcus. So these are more or less anatomical terms, but they're useful uh, for knowing with regards to microbiological organisms like bacteria because a lot of them are actually described by using some of these uh, anatomical locations. So moving on to how we describe bacterial shapes. A lot of bacteria are described by how they look, how they are shaped. The first one that you often hear of is staph or staphylo or staphylococcus. Really the prefix staph or staphylo means a cluster and really means a cluster of grapes. So when we look at a cluster of grapes and we look at staphylococcus aureus, there is similarity. So this is why staphylococcus is the way it's named. Staphylo means cluster of grapes and, it, and staphylococcus appears like a cluster of grapes when we look at it under a microscope. Another one that's very common is strep or strepto. This means chain. So the bacteria themselves are lined up in a chain. Vibrio, the uh, prefix or the word vibrio means a curved rod. So you can think of vibrio cholera and you can see here, here is a curved rod and here is actually vibrio cholera. And as you can see, it's in a shape of a curved rod. Other ones include spirillum and spirochete. These are both related to their structure being spiral shaped. And another one is clostry, uh, which means spindle. So you can think of clostridium difficile. Another term to describe a bacteria shape is echino. So echino means spine-like or prickle-shaped, so echinococcus. And actino, actinobacteria, 
these or the prefix actino means ray-like processes. So now that we've looked at prefixes that describe bacterial shapes, let's look at suffixes that describe their shape. Suffixes like the suffix bacillus and its plural form bacilli mean that the bacteria has a rod shape. So if we're to use that in the context of streptobacilli, so bacilli again is rod shaped, we learn that strepto means chain. So streptobacilli are rod shaped bacteria in a chain. So that's how we use that when we put them together. The suffix coccus and its plural form cocci means that the bacteria are round and spherical. So we, again, we've used staphylococcus as an example. And we can also use diplo. So diplo means that they're paired, that they're double, or there's two of them. Now, some bacteria are described by what process they perform or their metabolism. So processes like the suffix pyogenes means pus forming. Pyo means pus, genes means forming or initiating. So pyogenes means pus forming. You can think of the bacteria Streptococcus pyogenes. Lacto, the prefix lacto means or is something to do with relating to lactic acid or lactose. So it might mean that bacteria metabolize lactic acid or lactose or they produce it in some way. The other, some of the other processes that may be used in describing bacteria include the prefix aero, which relates to air, and sporo, which relates to spore formation. So now that we've talked a lot about bacteria, we'll move on to looking at specifiers for viruses. So the first one is the prefix picorna. And this is kind of clever in the sense that it really is just two words put together. Pico RNA. Pico RNA, which means small RNA. So picornavirus, that's related to something to do with small RNA when it was named. Oncorna virus, again, is similar to picorna. It's just two words, onco-RNA. Onco means cancer, so it's something related to cancer RNA. Mixovirus, so, or something with regards to the prefix mixo, means mucus. Parvo, like parvovirus B19, parvo means small. And retro, the prefix retro means backward. So we can think of retroviruses. You can think of HIV virus. These are retroviral uh, organisms. So now that we've learned all those prefixes and suffixes to describe different types of bacteria, viruses, and fungi, let's take a look at some practice problems. So the first one is streptobacillus. Streptobacillus. So if we were to look at streptobacillus, we break it down. The prefix strepto means chain, and bacillus means rod-shaped. So streptobacillus means a chain of gram-positive rod-shaped bacteria. So you might not necessarily know that it's gram-positive, but it is. But really what streptobacillus means is it's a chain of rod-shaped bacteria. The next word we're going to look at is onychomycosis. So if we break that down, onycho means the nail, so a fingernail. Myke or myco means fungus, and osis means abnormal condition. So onychomycosis means an abnormal condition of nail fungus. So it's a fungal infection of the nail. The next one we're going to look at is staphylococci. So because we see staphylococcus or hear about it a lot, what does it actually mean? It's good to practice what this actually means. So if we break it down, staphylo means a cluster of grapes, and cocci is the plural form of coccus, which means round or spherical shaped bacteria. So staphylococci means a round or spherical gram-positive bacteria grouped in clusters, and that's exactly what you see when you look at it under the microscope. That's how we know it's staphylococcus, because it's a big cluster of round shaped bacteria that are gram-positive after a gram stain. So that is why a staphylococcus is named the way it is. So the next word we're going to look at is pneumococcus. So if we break down 
pneumococcus. Pneumo means air or lung. And we just learned that coccus means round, spherical-shaped bacterium. So pneumococcus means a round-shaped bacterium that infects the lung. A bacteriophage, if we break that down, bacterial, that's easy. That means bacteria or something relating to a bacteria. And phage or phage means a virus. So what does this really mean, a bacteria virus? What does that mean? Well, it kind of actually means what it actually uh, denotes, bacteria virus. So it's a bacteria infecting virus. And the last word we're going to look at is adenovirus. So what does that mean? Adeno, we learned in this lesson, means gland or relating to glands. And virus means virus. So adenovirus really means a gland virus. So it's a virus that infects or is related to infection of glands. Anyways, guys, I hope you found this lesson helpful. This was a lesson looking at medical terminology with regards to microbiology. If you did find this lesson helpful, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Also, please check out my other medical terminology lessons as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.